Most cargo ships these days use what is called heavy fuel oil or bunker fuel. It is basically a type of residual fuel and as such contains many impurities which could damage the ship's engine. Which is why before being used, it needs to pass through the oil purifier, a machine which removes harmful impurities by means of centrifugal force. The purifier continuously operates while the ship's engine is running, which is why regular maintenance needs to be carried out in order to make sure that it functions as required. In this episode, you will get a glimpse on how the purifier is dismantled, cleaned, and reassembled, ready to be used at any given moment. For this maintenance job, I have appointed our engine cadet to take charge, under our supervision of course. We have trained him well, so it's time for him to show us what he has learned so far. This particular purifier is a Mitsubishi self-ejector. There are other brands of centrifugal purifiers like Alpha Laval and Westphalia to name a few, but the principle of operation is pretty much the same and the main components are almost identical. After making sure that all valves are closed and all the electrical connections have been locked out, the first thing to do is to loosen all the fittings and remove the sludge cover. Once the cover has been removed, the ball assembly can be seen. Depending on the purifier model, the ball assembly spins at around 15,000 to 18,000 revolutions per minute. Before the ball can be pulled out, we first need to remove the inlet pipe and the liquid chambers. In order to do that, we will need to loosen the disc nut. Next will be the heavy liquid chamber. Then, the heavy liquid impeller. And the gravity disc. Next to be removed is the light liquid chamber. This can be loosened by using the light liquid chamber handle. You can actually pull out the light liquid chamber, light liquid impeller, and inlet pipe all in one go as soon as the chamber is loosened. Before proceeding with the dismantling, a few points are measured and recorded. This is for future reference and also to serve as a guide when reassembling. To loosen the bowl from the vertical shaft, the cap nut must be removed. Once the bowl is removed, it will be brought to the workshop for dismantling. Again, measurements are taken, but this time for the vertical shaft. Next step will be to remove the water supplying device. The bowl bushing needs to be removed first by using the jack.
From here, the water supplying device can be removed. For this maintenance job, we won't be removing the horizontal shaft, but it is necessary for us to loosen the spiral gear in order to proceed in pulling out the vertical shaft. Now that the spiral gear is out of the way, we can continue with the removal of the vertical shaft. First, we remove the mist cover. Next is the upper bearing cap. Then the upper bearing cover. From here, the vertical shaft can be pulled out. Finally, the upper bearing housing can also be pulled out. At this point, we have dismantled all the parts that are scheduled for maintenance. All of them have been brought to the workshop for cleaning. For the vertical shaft, we will be removing the old bearings and replace them with new ones. After the bearings have been removed from the shaft, it will be cleaned and then checked for bending. Next, we'll be dismantling the bowl. It needs to be placed on the disassembly stand. First step is to set the disc clamp plate. Firmly tighten the nut using a hammer. This will dampen the spring effect of the discs and make it easier to release the bowl nut.
Next is to set the ball head jack and use it to slowly remove the ball head. From here, use the bowl lifting jack to remove the distributor from the bowl along with the disc stack. Next step is to remove the main cylinder. Next, we will be removing the pilot valves. Now that all of the parts have been disassembled, each of them will be cleaned and all o-rings and seal rings will be replaced with new spares. Once everything has been cleaned, it's time to reassemble. When setting each part, there are markings or guides so as to make sure that they are installed and locked in place correctly.
when tightening the ball nut, make sure to align the markings. This will indicate the correct torque to tighten everything in place. Once the vertical shaft and the water supplying device is in place, it's time to install the bowl. Purifier maintenance is one of the jobs typically assigned to the junior engineers. As our cadet is lined up for promotion to fourth engineer on his next vessel assignment, we made sure not only to train him properly, but to assess him properly as well. Although we were present all the time to monitor and provide guidance, we let him call the shots on this one. After all, there's nothing like first-hand experience when it comes to building confidence. Knowledge of the job is one thing, but if you never experienced it for yourself, never got down and got your hands dirty, everything will remain theoretical to you. Now that the purifier has been boxed up, it's time for a running test. For this, we will only start it without load, meaning we will only test the movement without actually letting in dirty oil. This will allow us to observe if there are heavy vibrations and listen to the sound of the bearings using a stethoscope. Based on our initial observation, everything has been set in place properly and the purifier is ready to be used anytime.